My name's Greg. This is my friend Travis. We're going to play horse. It's probably not going to go well. Beautiful facility, by the way. Appreciate that. This is all set up based upon your TBT winnings and all that stuff. Was that part of the vision, if you <laughs> no. want to go back that far? No. Uh, I, I fell into this. I got lucky with my business partner, Steve. Uh, he had this vision years ago about creating this kind of uh, environment for, for the younger generation, and I kind of... Uh, I was in, trying to transition from from playing, and thought this would be the right, the right next step, and it's been a real blessing for me. Physical therapy, working out, basketball courts, tournaments, camps, right, all here in Mequon. All busy, all the time. Uh, youth sports never stops, so it's uh, it's been very fun and satisfying uh, for the first three years. Yeah. Still got your jump shot? I think so. We'll find out. I never had one. We'll see how this goes. All right, now, do you want to go first because it's your home court, or is it like the generous you're visiting? I'm not. I'm ultra competitive, so normally I'd say I would shoot first, but I'll let you see, shoot first. <laughs> I mean, I can't, lose, good. I can't <laughs> lose in my home gym. Not in your home gym. Even, even if we had like a Nerf hoop, I don't think. Uh, no, we'll see. That you wouldn't be good right. Looking, good looking stroke. I've seen it. Uh, getting old, though. <laughs> Look at that. You right have to start the with the make against a pro, that's for sure. Still there. All right, little side shot. Oh, limited. Not good. Left the door open early. Easy. Oh, long. That's an H. So when did when did you know Dwayne Wade was good? Like, holy cow! Wait a minute here. Ah, uh, it happened rather quickly yeah. you know I was I was recruited on the basis that Marquette and, and coach Crean selling the fact that they had this kid sitting out that was going to be extremely good and I thought that was you know coach speak like oh no we we want you because we're because you know one of the things I really wanted to be is competitive go to a school that had a chance to win and at that time Marquette had struggled a little bit and so I didn't really know and they're like yeah this kid's sitting out and you know once I started going down there when I was in high school for you know, open gyms or to watch the team practice or, or play, you can find out rather quickly that, you know, this kid was everything that they, they said and more. Uh, so, yeah, I think first few times in the gym, you know, like, you don't know he's going to be an NBA Hall of Famer, but you're like, yeah. yeah, you can win with this guy. So some guys look a little different. Yeah, right? he, he definitely looked different. Different bounce. Different bounce, kind of his stuff. length. Uh, yeah. His attitude, his, his personality, he had, I mean, there's a reason he's one of the best players of all time. Yeah. He had it all, yeah. Tried to take him out of his rhythm there. I don't know if it worked. <laughs> we'll see. You hit a lot of these in your career. Still looks the same. Oh, that's off. That's an O. <clears throat> Who else recruited you? If you go back to that day, like, what were your options at that point? Uh, I'd actually had a, a made a really kind of rash de decision after I went to my official visit to St. Louis, which was being coached by Lorenzo Romar. But my cousin Drew, who's two years older than me, or three years older than me, um, was there. And I uh, had an incredible visit and went home that night and essentially told my parents, or told my mom, that I was going to commit the next day to St. Louis. And then, uh, She's like, well, I'll kind of sleep on it, tell your dad in the morning. And they didn't really like that decision. <laughs> so all the, and my sisters didn't like it, my mom didn't like it. I think my dad was like, well, let's kind of let the process continue to play out. You're kind of maybe being a little emotional right now because you had such a good time. And you know your cousin's there and he plays. Uh, so ultimately it really came down to Marquette, Wisconsin. Uh, I had a great relationship with, with the Bennett family, with, with Coach, Coach Dick Bennett, but most of the recruiting was done by Tony. Yep. Um, but I just, I didn't see myself in that style of play. Uh, you know, it's slow. Uh, they were winning. I mean, they're coming off of, you know, they had a, in, in 2000, they went to the Final Four. Uh, but I just felt like, you know, getting up and down, playing uh, that style of basketball, my, my relationship with Coach Green uh, ultimately led me to, to Marquette. Fit pretty well. Yeah, I don't, I, don't perfect fit. I don't regret it one bit. Yeah, no, I can't imagine you would. Can't imagine you would. Staying deep on me. Oh, good. <clears throat> Some things just look easy to people. 
Oh, shorts. <laughs> no legs. Does that feel like over 20 years ago, that run to the Final Four? It's 21 years ago. At times it does. Um, <clears throat> At times, it feels like it was yesterday. Yeah. You know, to, you know, when Marquette, even this year and last year, because we're having such a great year, it gets talked about a lot more, and uh, the opportunity for this year's team to, to make a deep run. Uh, so then it feels like it was yesterday, because you relive kind of all those moments going through it. Um, but then, you know, as we've all gotten older with my teammates and you have families and kids, it, you do, and you look at yourself in the mirror and you feel and you look a lot older. <laughs> Uh, it does feel like it was, you know, 21 years ago. Yeah, the stories get bigger and better too. I'm sure. Yeah, everything's time. always exaggerated. Right, and, yeah. right, right. <laughs> so oh, that's all good. They should. They yeah, should. right. I thought that was gonna rim out for a second. That there it better. is. There we go. That's better. I remember watching your games in high school when I was at Oshkosh. Like that was before high school games were really on TV. Um, but your teams at Fond du Lac were incredible. The gyms mm -hmm. were always packed. Now I watch athletes play, high school athletes, and it just doesn't look like what I remember in high school. Right? Yeah, I mean, it, everybody's dunking. Kids <laughs> are going to the NBA coming out of Wisconsin. It used to be you have to, you know, hunt through the, the weeds to find that blue chipper from Wisconsin. Now they're everywhere. Like, th this is, what do you make of the growth of high school basketball in the state especially? Yeah, it's a... Uh it's exciting. Uh, the state of Wisconsin for, for boys and girls has developed so many great players in the last, especially in like the last 10 years. You've seen NBA players, WNBA players all over the place that come from Wisconsin. I think it's a credit to, you know, the brand of basketball we play here, the coaching that, that, these, that I got that other kids are getting at the high school level, uh, you know, at the AU level. I think, you know, it's just a good brand of basketball. I think it's a very knowledgeable state about basketball, so I think kids are growing up knowing how to play the right way which I think has been lost in maybe other places. So I think, you know, if you watch, you know, whoever it is this year, a uh, uh, Con Knippel, uh, who's going to Duke, he really understands how to, obviously he's a fantastic player, mm -hmm. but he knows really how to play basketball. And I've, tra I've watched, you know, a lot of high school boys, high school girls basketball games. Just seems like they're, they're well coached and, and kids really know how to play basketball. And that, I think over time, you know, helps them achieve success uh, more so than not ever because I think, you know, playing the right way has kind of lost its luster over the last 20 years and guys are just, you know, there's not a lot of team. It's, it's more about the individual. Yeah. Yeah, feeder programs have really grown. I remember our basketball season started with like six open gyms and then your first practice. Uh, yeah. Uh, that was about it, right? right? Exactly. Because guys are coming off soccer or football or whatever it was in the fall. Yeah, and I think part of you that know? is, and I don't, I don't know how many sports you played in high school, and I think people are getting away from, you know, I played three sports two through high school of football until I was 14 or 15. I think that's so beneficial as well. And yeah. I think now kids are specializing way too early. I think if you're a good athlete, you, you play them all and you'll end up being whatever you want to be. And you can be very passionate about that one sport later on. But I just think uh, it's so beneficial to, to play different sports. Each sport teaches you something different. Um, and I'm a very big proponent of, of that. Yeah. making headway here. Did you ever take a two-point shot? <laughs> if you want me to, I will. There you go. You're getting hot now. All right. You want me to move it in? I'm good. <laughs> I'll shoot <laughs> wherever you want. You're on the floor. I'll shoot a free throw. Now that I'm finding my range. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll bring it in for you. Shoot a free throw. <laughs> Oh no, <laughs> needed to go back out. What was the most meaningful stop in your basketball career? Go back to high school, college, Italy, NBA, TBT. Like what's most <laughs> meaningful to you? That's an that's a incredibly <clears throat> hard question. Um, you know, playing in high school for my uncle, playing with my cousins, uh, had had incredible meaning because I grew up with them and they're my family. Um, then obviously going to college and having the success that we had with Coach Crean and, and those teammates who I'm still incredibly close with. And you go through you go through a lot together in college. Uh, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy for any of us. So to achieve success while going through so much uh, has deeper meaning than than I think. 
playing in the NBA. But what led me to the NBA is, you know, those those things that I had to deal with and, and got over and persevered. Uh, the NBA was a dream. Uh, getting drafted was uh, maybe the most uh, exciting moment of my basketball career. But the the five years in the NBA, I didn't. It was kind of a roller coaster. Uh, and then I got to go to Italy and and play in, in f fantastic environments with incredible fans. And you know, when you when you start to have a family and kids, and then you can they can watch you play, there's a whole different meaning. So, and then obviously the TBT where my kids got to see me on TV and play. Yeah. So they all have different meanings. I, I would say that you know having your kids be able to share it with you, your family. Uh, has probably the most meaning for me, and um, but that doesn't take away from you know the childhood, the college. I just think uh, when you have kids, there's a whole different perspective on how you kind of feel about things and look at things. So everything, everything is yeah, meaningful. Yeah, I, really, I didn't really answer but it, but yeah, <laughs> I've, I've been very fortunate but for different reasons, yeah, it's right? For different reasons, it's been such a good and long mm -hmm. ride for me. I've the TBT, like you said, was happened so late in life for me. I'm not. I mean. In basketball terms, you know, I was, I think, what, 38 or 39 when we won it. So, like, that usually doesn't happen. You don't usually get to put on yeah. a Marquette jersey and play at that age. And it doesn't mean a lot, but it means something. And so um, that was enjoyable for me. And, yeah, so I didn't really answer your question, yeah. but it all meant, it all means so much well, to me. Well, you bookended it with family, right? You yeah. played for family, with family, uh, and then having your family being able to kind of soak in the experience with you at the at sort of the end. See, and that's right? why you're professional. Yeah, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> I can shoot. You can make me sound better than I can sound. What's this? Do we even know the score? Yeah, I don't. I don't have no letters yet. I don't think I have no letters. Zero I zero. <laughs> oh, finally, finally. see, you got me talking about family, and I'm, yeah, I can't go. concentrate. The emotional heartstrings. Yeah, pulling at them, tugging is, at them. Is this where I have to get like super crafty now? Or do you just stick to your guns? <laughs> what do you do here? How about a straight on bank? Okay. Gotcha. Of course, I got to make it too. <laughs> <laughs> Seemed like a good idea at the time. So your, your career record in this is one and one? Uh, I'm one and one, yes. Okay. Yeah, 500, which is not bad. Not bad. <laughs> I, I do not think you're going to go over 500 today, though. <laughs> <laughs> At least I hope not. Get out of there! Oh, man. Uh, so I, I, was, I beat Bart Lundy, the Milwaukee Panthers head coach, and I lost to Wesley Person, who I believe at one time he can hit really like shoot 44% yes. from three yeah, in the so. NBA. That you was were, not a you, difficult you had, a, you had bad odds in that one. I did not have good odds at all. All right, uh, a little lefty mini bank. I remember that being kind of a thing when Bruce Pearl was at Milwaukee. Like, they got hot and kind of made their run. And then all of a sudden, the big question was, like, well, why don't Marquette and Milwaukee play? And I remember that being a thing. And Bruce yep. wanted to do it. I don't think Tom was a big fan of it because I think the general thought was, like, well, what do we have yep. to gain yep. here? Yeah. Right? Do you remember thinking from a player standpoint, like, that would have been cool to have some sort of interstate kind of we all play each other, Green Bay, Marquette, Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Yeah, absolutely. As a, as a competitor, as a player, you want to play uh, people that, you know, a lot of kid, guys that went to Milwaukee, I played with or played against growing up and, and were literally in the five minutes from each other. Uh, it would have been fun to, to compete against because at that point, like you said, Milwaukee was really good. Um, not to say they weren't all the time, but they were in the Sweet, Sweet 16 team. Joe Tucker is a guy I played AU basketball with through my whole life, Adrian Tiger that I played against when he was at Oshkosh West. Uh, so I, I, get, I get both sides of it. Yeah. If you're Korean, it's like, well, I think at that point, though, you, you had something to gain because Milwaukee was, was good. And now if, if Milwaukee or Green Bay aren't as good, then to, to gain something by playing them, I don't know what you really gain besides the opportunity to lose and then it, sure. it looks terrible, yeah. but I yeah. mean, who really cares at the end of the day? Like, I mean, for, I think for us players, we always wanted that opportunity uh, to play against, you know, the three state schools or the three Division One schools other than ourselves. Um, and it had been fun if there was like a mini in-state tournament every year to settle, you know, who's for that particular, who's the best team. All right.
That felt like a real horse shot there. <laughs> I like your. I like how you're. I like this though. Getting creative. Uh, a little mid range. Oh, flat. Super flat. Elbow. Yes. Shot. One with a bank. Oh gosh. Oh. Do you still get butterflies watching tournament games? Whether it's Marquette or I don't know, Florida Gulf Coast. Like whatever. You just because of your experience in it, when you watch it, do you just kinda Put yourself back yeah, in Yeah, I mean, when watching Marquette, for sure, because it means something, yeah. I, I still care deeply about the team um, and the players and the staff, and I want Marquette to do well. Uh, but I think when you watch such high-pressure situations for kids, you want them to do well. And when you see a kid make a mistake, you just you kind of feel for them because it is on the biggest stage for, for a lot of players that will never have the opportunity to maybe play again. They're playing in front of millions of people. So, um, but I, I, I never got really that nervous. I got anxious to play basketball games, but mm -hmm. never really, you know, before games. But, um, you know, when I watch my own kids play, there's a, it's just a different feeling when you're, when you're, when you can't have any control over the outcome. It's, it's, it's really hard to kind of watch. So, yeah, you know, that's why, you know, I tell my wife, I, I've went to a lot of Marquette games this year, but it's easier just to stay at home by myself and, and watch. Um, just because it's a different feeling just watching on TV or watching without having any control over what sure. the outcome is. It's easier to get to the fridge for a Miller Lite, too. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> All yeah. right, put me out of my misery. Oh, I missed it. Oh! Door right. is open. Did you ever get kicked out of practice? No. Tom never kicked you out of a practice? Not individually. Uh, did he uh, kick he a whole team out? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that was, yeah, that was common occurrence. <laughs> yeah. No, he, he had kicked individuals out before. I never got kicked out individually. Um, he had kicked Dwayne out before. He kicked Rob Jackson out before. That's like a message, right? Isn't it to, to yeah. everybody else in the team? Like, well, look, I the think, best player just yeah, got booted. Yeah, I mean, I think sometimes coach would come into practice, you know, premeditated on what was going to happen. Yeah. And we had no chance. And so it was like, you know, kick everybody out, and we're going to come back in five hours and practice. So, yeah. uh, but sometimes it was probably, you know, deserved, well deserved for an individual to get kicked out if, you know, they didn't have the energy or they had an attitude. I'm um, not to say that I, I don't remember the specific instances when an individual was kicked out, but yeah, that happened. Seems to me there'd be some challenging times. Uh, it was not, yeah, it yeah. wasn't yeah. always easy. It was. And it shouldn't be. <laughs> to accomplish, you know, yep. what we did or You're right. individually or collectively, you got to go through a lot of adversity. Um, and we did, and you know it's what made us, you know, a special group. Absolutely. Uh, a little side angle here. Oh, that's long. Jeez. Uh, I, I'm. How old are you, Greg? Forty-six. Yeah. Uh, I would have chased that one down for you, but. Yeah, it's all right. I'm forty-two now too, so I don't move as well either. Still got it. <laughs> Ooh, clip the front and in. All right. Oh, I actually thought that was decent. That's it. Appreciate Thanks. it, man. No, Good thank stuff. you. No, that was fun. Hey, that was a lot of fun, man. A lot Appreciate of fun it. to get there. I appreciate you doing this. No, and anytime. This is amazing, too. Congrats on the athlete performance Thanks. situation you have here.